What's up, y'all? Yeah. It's Sugar Pearl Studio Kitchen live. Welcome to my show. I'm so glad you're here. Ah. Oh. Okay. So tonight, hold on, let me let me adjust a little. Let me adjust just a little. Why is this like extra big? I don't need to be extra big. Anyway. Hey y'all. Hi. Heather Shelton. Hi, babe. My cousin Patrick. Hi. Welcome to the show, y'all. It's dude, it's Sugar Pearls Studio Kitchen Live. Now, if you have not done it, y'all, or if this is your first time watching the show, um, I'm also on YouTube. However, it's not live on YouTube. So the videos that I do here live on Facebook. I post to YouTube, which is um, Sugar Pearls. That's it. S-U-G-A-R-P-E-A-R-L apostrophe S. That's it. That's it. Um, Instagram. Uh, you can also check me out there for any updates that I might add to my website. Um, Instagram is at Sugar Pearls underscore online okay and of course the new and improved website <laughs> is www.sugarpearlsonline.com let me give it to you again s-u-g-a-r sugar p-e-a-r-l-s online o-n-l-i-n-e dot com I'm so glad y'all are here with me today. Welcome cousins, welcome friends, welcome family. Okay. Uh, so today, I don't, need, I don't even know if this is a cooking show today. Okay. Hi, Kelvin Harry. Hey. Hi, Vicky. Thank you, baby. I love you and I miss you. And thank you for those pictures. Um, so like I say, I don't know if this is a cooking show today. I don't. Um, I'm tired. I'm tired. Uh, working out of high school now. And because high school starts early, they get out early. I've been at work like 6.35, y'all. 6.35 a.m. Which means I'm waking up at 3.55 a.m. So I can get the brows and everything right. Put my lashes on and stuff. Because, you know, my high school kids, they, mm, they ain't nothing nice. They put you on blast if, if your stuff ain't right. So I got to make sure my brows good before I go into work. Uh, yeah. So, um... Anyway, so today's show, <laughs> let me back up. So I was telling one of my high school kids, um, she tunes in, she watches the videos on my website, 10th grade, and she said, Miss Carla, I know you're not going to do that on the show. And I was like, yeah, like, I have not, I'm sorry, I got a fruit fly in here and it's driving me crazy. Um, so tonight's menu is really based on, like, one of my favorite street food items. Okay, so my, hey Alex, y'all. Anthony, what's up? That was my acting partner back in Virginia Beach. Um... Yeah, so it, it's a street food kind of menu tonight. Y'all, when I tell you I am not feeling so great. So you know the last time um, I talked, the week before that, I was actually sick. I had viral bronchitis and um, temperature ended up going up. And right now I'm just, mm, I'm, I'm just not feeling so great so I didn't want to cook a full-on fancy meal I don't eat fancy all the time okay every now and then I like to spice things up with a little something something 
But tonight, hold on. Like I said, this is not going to be a cooking show. I'm actually doing the show tonight. You're going to watch me fix myself something to eat uh, while I talk about something else. Okay? Let me, let me show you what's going on. I got my griddle going here. I got some broccoli already steamed. And I'm going to fry that later. I've got my onions and garlic in here with a little Worcestershire, salt, pepper. Um, so let me, let me show you what I'm doing. Okay. Let me just show you. What am I doing? Oh, here we go. <laughs> now don't laugh at me, y'all. Don't laugh, but... I j tonight I just I needed to do something quick simple I gotta go out of town in the morning and I wanted like one of my favorite street food snacks because I don't want to eat so heavy tonight that street food snack happens to be don't judge me Hebrew National yes Kosher B. Franks. Uh, I got a little chili that I'm going to make with that. And I'm going to throw some coleslaw. I did not make it myself this time. I, I got it from Publix because this is just where I am right now. Um, and I will, I'll explain as I go uh, what's been happening with you, girl. Um, yeah, so we're just going to do a little street food tonight. Um, I've already browned my ground beef. I'm going to turn this pot back on because I'm going to throw my um, beef, my ground beef in there. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start to prep my little chili. Now, some people do turkey meat and stuff, and that's absolutely your prerogative. I'm not crazy about turkey meat because I don't like the texture of the ground turkey. You know, I'm old school. I still like a nice, chunky beef chili on my hot dog. So that's what I'm doing tonight. All right? Do it the way you like. But how I like it is, is this way. All right. So I'm going to throw my um, ground beef in here. And I'm we're, we're just going to spend some time together. If you don't mind, I'm only going to take a few minutes of your time tonight. Um, just because I'm just, ooh. I'm still dealing with the after effects of a little illness. And I know, y'all, I know that, oh, I got my kitchen shears back. Mm -hmm. um, so I know that this, this illness that just won't go away is a result of my, um, I just being tired and kind of stressed and you know I ain't mad but yeah. so I got my beef franks on here and what I like to do with my beef, beef franks y'all is I like to split them because I want to open them up and um, heat them on the inside too I don't like to boil them because that to me is just like mm. I don't know I don't want to taste no water I want to taste it fried okay so that's what I'm going to do. Um, when I tell you that my student could not believe, she was like, you are not going to do hot dogs on your show tonight. And I was like, yes, ma'am, I am. Yes, ma'am. So I got, so you want to do your Franks like that. So all of that chili goodness can get on the inside. And you're just going to fry it. So I got my handy dandy griddle here so I can fry. I've got some really good music, a little Rochelle Pharrell going in the background. I know, I know. A really nice, sexy hot dog kind of night. Yo, who is that? Is that, hey Eve? Hey there, yo. Um, some days you just ain't feeling it. And this is one of those, now, I, now if you want to see me eating good in the hood, 
with some really awesome recipes, um, then go to my website, sugarpearlsonline.com. S-U-G-A-R-P-E-A-R-L-S online.com. And there you can see just a few of the recipes that I've done over time, um, in particular on this live, um, where I show you how to make some, some cool stuff. But um, today, it's all about the dog. Hey, Benita. Welcome back, honey. I'm here. I'm, I know. I got the Cicely Tyson. Uh, this is where I am. This is just where I am right now. But uh, we're going to make it work. We we just are. A little olive oil on that to really get it popping. So I'm just going to fry my hot dogs inside where I split them. And then on the outside also. So that way I make sure they're cooked through and through. And right now i got my ground beef in here. I've got my onions and my garlic and some Worcestershire sauce. Um, I season my ground beef. When I fry it, that just cuts down on you using so much salt um, after it's it's cooked through. So if you add your little spices and stuff throughout the cooking process, you don't have to worry about doing so, so much. Okay? All we're doing is a little chili right now. Okay? So I'm going to bring that up. I'm going to add a little beef broth. Now, if... If you're doing, if you're vegetarian, then by all means, don't, you know, you ain't got to do none of this. Y'all can use, you know, um, your cremini or your oyster mushrooms, chop those up, season them real good, add some um, vegetarian broth to it. Yeah, right? I know what it's about. You ain't got to do what I do. Um, but I wanted some, some beef because I'm from South Carolina. I mean, that's just the traditional way to do it for us. Um, so I went to the farmer's market today. So nice. It wasn't full, but they had some awesome vendors out there. Um, and I was able to buy... Let me show you some of the stuff I bought. Hang on one second. Hey, hold on, hold on. I bought some um I bought some limes, I bought some okra. So this okra, let me show y'all this okra though. I got some more of them in there, but these the okra I bought, y'all. They're so long and pretty and tender. And when I fry those things out, oh my goodness, it's gonna be so good. So I got the okra today. I bought some lemongrass. Yeah. Let me show you the lemongrass. It is absolutely beautiful. Oh, and I got some um, some broccoli and some romaine lettuce for my salads. Um, but I bought some lemongrass today. Hey, Bev. And this is your lemongrass. Very long. Um, maybe in another video, I'll show you how to how to do the lemongrass. I got it because I want to make some lemongrass tea and you need to be able to peel back you know the roughest layers of the lemongrass chop it up real fine throw it in some hot water with some honey a little piece of lime and you got yourself a delicious lemongrass tea all right hey Patrick hey sis my big sister Cheryl is on so that's my lemongrass and I put it in this little thing of water so that it can stay nice and fresh um yeah when I tell you the farmers market was so much fun um oh yeah with that farmers market was nice they've got awesome vendors they've got Asian vendors which is where I got the lemongrass from um People who have all sorts of beautiful tomatoes and lettuce and they even sell CBD products out there not that I bought any I, I didn't get any but I'm just saying if you were looking for CBD product I mean they had the flour and everything 
And he was like, would you like to smell it? I said, yeah, I would like to smell it. So he lifted up this big old glass jar with all the, the, CBD, the um, CBD flowers in it. I might as well just say, y'all, it looked like, like buds. It, it was some bud. Mm-hmm. Like that bud you're thinking about, it was that. But it was, um, the TH, there was no THC in it. It's just, you know, for relaxation, whatever. I didn't buy none, promise. Um, but when I tell you that thing smelled like, mmm. Yeah, the nostalgia that came back. And, uh, I had to thank him for, for letting me sniff a little. And then I walked on past, because I know that kind of temptation is something I don't need. So I just, I walked on past. Yes. Now I'm going to do some um, onions on this side. I got some red onions right there. Y'all, went to that farmer's market today and I spent $9. $9. And I bought like broccoli, lettuce. I need to put it back in the fridge because I don't want it to wilt. Broccoli, lettuce, lemongrass. Um, limes. Um, what else did I get? Oh, and plums and grapes. I got some, um, some of those red muscadine grapes. And some, um, some good old plums before they go out of season. Alright, so I got my beef broth in here with my, I'm going to put my broccoli on here too. I like to, um, now I love to like, um, kind of blanch my broccoli with seasoning and butter and olive oil and all that. But then I like to put it on the griddle to give it a little crust when it fries through. Oh my gosh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. Oh, yeah. I know. I'm I'm cheating tonight, y'all. When I tell you I've been ooh, go that way. Oh, uh, I have been craving. Craving. Like a pregnant woman craving hot dogs this week. No side jokes. But I just wanted some good old hot dogs. And I found the Hebrew National on sale and I said, you know what, that's what it's gonna be. I'm going to make that. Um, so let me show you how I'm going to do this chili. Right now, I want to pull these wieners off. Because that's going to go inside my bun when I'm ready. But right now, I'm going to just... Ooh, ooh, ooh. Fry out my broccoli. And... Oh, my niece Ashley shared my promo today. Thank you, Ashley. I love you. <laughs> yes, watch it. Come on, craving, huh? Yeah, I was craving. I was craving. I'm gonna show you how to how I do a little quick chili. I'm gonna turn this light on. So I can see better. All right. Now don't flip that broccoli. Let it kind of let it caramelize on one side. For my chili, I'm going to do a little ketchup. Oh, great! Did you see that? Just all over the place. Oh, when I tell you, child, I ain't even, I'm, um, I'm a little discombobulated this evening. Just a little bit. Yeah. You know, my stove, honey, I can't have my stove looking crazy. Where my salt at? I need some salt for them onions. There we go.
see what that broccoli do. Flip it. This is what I want. Just like that. Just a little crust on one side. It's already cooked. I ain't trying to cook it to death. I'm just, I want to get a little caramelization and really get those spices. Right? 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 Y'all going to work, just work with me. I know it's, it's street food tonight. It's hot dogs tonight, but this, this is what I got. This is what I got to get you. Now, I'm going to get a little um hmm, bowl. Wash my hands. Just a little bowl to put that, that broccoli in. I, wanna, I ain't going to get no more bowl. I'm going to use the same bowl that I got the hot dogs in. Now, you know, if you got somebody that don't eat meat, then, of course, don't cross-contaminate by putting the veggies in there with the meat, but... Since it's just me tonight, um, this is how we're going to do it. This is how we do it. Okay. I need a little more ketchup for my, um... For my chili. I think this this done had it. That done had it. Um, I got some chili, there you go. Chili garlic sauce. You can find that in the um Asian cooking aisle. I'm gonna just do like a because it, it can be quite spicy. So I'm gonna use about a half a teaspoon for right now just to start me out. Do some tomato paste. That was a teaspoon and a half. I'm going to do a little um, cumin. Ground cumin. <laughs> hey, Trina. I know, I know. Now, normally I... Yeah, I like to do a little something different on Friday nights. But tonight, I was just like, all I want is a hot dog. That's it. I don't feel like cooking no big meal. I got to go out of town in the morning. And all I want is something quick and easy that I can do. Oh, that was some cumin I just put in. I did a half a teaspoon. Do a little bit of beef broth. Well, this is continuing to come up a little bit. I'm going to do a half a teaspoon of spicy mustard. Yes. And stir it up. Hey, hey. Little darling, stir it up. I still got perfect pitch, y'all. Okay, I think I need a little more beef broth. I'm not trying to thin it out, but what I'm trying to do is add the flavor of the beef beef broth beef beef, beef broth so that I can bring it up to a boil and bring it back down and that way it's nice and reduced and all the flavors that you need are in there. Alright. Very simple, nothing hard. I'm not even on here to show y'all how to make hot dogs. All I'm on here doing is making tonight's dinner for myself and you just happen to be watching so thank you thank you for watching my love um so um a couple of things i wanted to talk to you about tonight because I, I ain't gonna be before you long i i simply won't i want to I'm going to taste this. Uh, hold on. That's good. Oh, and it's got the good kick to it. 
Ooh, we. I put a little, little bit of that uh, chili garlic sauce in there, honey. A little bit of uh, spice and mustard that coops. Mm hmm. Now close that up. Shut up and let it go. Let it go. All right. Now I'm gonna put these onions. I like coleslaw on my hot dogs, so I, I hope you don't mind when I add a little. I'm going to take some of this sauce. When I used to work in New York, cover that up. Y'all saw what I did? Hey, Nita. <laughs> so I had um, I my onions were frying and everything, and I just took a little bit of water, threw it on there, then covered it up with the lid so that it can steam. Because I want those onions soft. But I was saying, when I worked in New York, um, doing radio, I was I was working at WHCR, Harlem Community Radio, in uh, Spanish Harlem. And uh, every day while I was walking up that big old hill to City College, oh Lord, that hill, that's when I was fit. But I would walk up that hill, but before I got to the hill, um, I would stop and I would get me a hot dog. And they had, a, it was almost like a ketchup sauce or something that I was just like, yeah, loaded up with onions. And they would have the onions on there and the, oh my gosh, it was so good. So I'm going to try to replicate that tonight. I don't know, but it'll be all right. Yeah. It ain't all pretty. It's live. It is live, baby. I'm gonna catch up salt. Do a little more water on that. Just the steam, just the steam, not to drown it. Let's turn that down. All right. So my chili is looking real good. You should have had Slater as you get. Honey, let me, I'm trying to replicate the Slater dog. That's what I'm trying to do. The flavor of childhood. That man, no, he could make some hot dog chili. Ooh wee. Oh my gosh. So Slater, this is an homage to you tonight. Why did I do water and I got beef broth? I can do the beef broth. Yes, yes. Um, so I'm gonna get my hot dog buns and let's chat a little bit. So I think it is gonna be tasty, Nita. I, I'm, I'm hoping it, it'll work for me anyway, cause this was all I wanted all week. I didn't want nothing. I didn't even want fish. I was like, I just want a good old street hot dog. And so I figured I'd just make me one. How many wieners? I think I got three wieners. Now I'm not gonna eat three hot dogs, but I um. Boom. Boom. Put that on up there. I think I need a little bit of. Let me heat up this pan a little bit. There we go. Just a little. Just a little. I like all parts of my hot dog warmed up, so that means I like the bun kind of soft. 
Idiots. Get that going. Oh. It's been a hectic week, y'all. It's been an emotional week for your girl. Um, and I think that sometimes when we are, sometimes when we have these emotions and things like we, we don't always show them outwardly, but they, they tend to come out in other ways. Um, so I have to be careful about that. Um, but it's, it's been a lot on the family lately. Um, my beautiful cousins. Uh, Nosha, she finally went on home, cancer-free, cancer-free, and she had been saying for months, I'm cancer-free, I don't know what y'all worried about, and she, um, she took it on home this week, and, uh, my other dear cousin in, uh, Florida, she went on home, also as a result of cancer, um, and uh, Michelle Morgan, Williams Morgan. So you know all of that when you when you see loss, but then you're able to like rely on memories. And one thing I'm gonna always remember about my cousin Nosha is that doggone. She made me a carrot. Not me. I'm okay. So I'm being selfish. She made it for the family. But I claimed it as my own. <laughs> she could make the bomb carrot cake. Oh my gosh. And I remember once she um she finished with one of her treatments early on. I said, you got to get better. Because I need for you to make my carrot cake. And she was like, okay, I got you. I got you. Well, needless to say, I did not get the carrot cake. But um, um just the memories of that. And seeing her like actually cut and shred the carrots and get the fruit cocktail and so that was the moistest the most is it moistest or most most moist i don't know some people don't even like the word moist but it was moist it was oh boy i gotta learn how to make it um so i won't be getting that anytime soon but i'm glad that um cousin nosha and michelle are they're not in pain. They're not struggling no more. And you know what? They were extremely happy with life and being surrounded by people they knew loved them. So that that was um that was the sadness, but also the goodness of it. Um another thing that happened is so <sighs> I have a diverse group of friends, um, culturally, racially, spiritually, like just diverse, black, white, gay, straight, like it don't matter. Um, if, if you my friend, you my friend. And once I call you sister or brother or friend, then we locked in. Um, and with one of my girlfriends who happens to be, you know, white, um, some of our experiences from our life are very different. Um, she's never had to deal with, um, a lot of the struggles that many, um, disenfranchised or, you know, non-whites have had to deal with. So, um, we were, I remember we were in a meeting and I called attention to something that was, it was obvious. And what was obvious was that there were pretty much all white looking people on the panel. Now, one of the women was actually Hispanic. Um, but when you looked at it, it all looked very vanilla. So I called attention to that and um, my friend kind of, she was like, well, why, why, does, why does that matter? And, you know, who cares if there's nobody, you know, I don't think she said who cares, but she couldn't understand why I 
why I brought attention to the fact that if you are if you are here to represent a marginalized group of people then do your best to represent most of what that looks like and you cannot represent that if all y'all look the same or it looks like you've had the same experiences um so i brought attention to it and you know we talked about it and i don't think she really understand where i was going with that and i know i'm i'm not going into so much detail because i don't want to like you know be like you know make y'all try to figure out what was going on but um sometimes people just don't they don't understand your struggle and even if it's not your struggle it, it may be the struggle of your people um and when you feel like you have representatives there but you don't have your voice there you have to call it out you it, it, you must uh and even i guess my problem is even when you call it out in the most polite way the fragility of some people can't handle it But that's no longer on you anymore, is it? Nope. It's no longer on you. So that was my experience um, this week. Just learning how to navigate um, sisterhoods and friendships and all that when when you are not in agreement and when when you don't come from the same background and and when you haven't seen or experienced the same thing it's not your job to make someone understand it's your job to express yourself and to say what it is that disturbs you or bothers you or hurts you it's your, not your job to convince anybody else of how you feel. Um, so, there we are. But we good. We on track. I just know that, you know, that that's a work. That That's a work that's in me. I can't do that work for nobody else. But that's a work that is within me. So, I'll get through it. Get my onions off of here. Oh, wow, that's going to be delish. Um, so the other thing I wanted to talk to y'all about are... Ooh. Hang on. I got to make sure my bun's right. Make sure my bun's right, okay? Okay. Yes, I do believe it's getting right. So the other thing is, um, we have some very talented folks. So for those of you that are joining me live, that uh, let me give you just a little bit of backstory. Hey, Lala. A little bit of backstory. So I am from, and I never have a problem saying it. You know, some people when they move away to another city another town they'll they'll say that they're from a bigger city so that people can understand proximity not me hey. when people ask me where you're from i proudly say i am from lynchburg south carolina Mm hmm and they're like lynchburg i never heard of that i've heard of lynchburg tennessee i've heard of lynchburg virginia i'm like yeah there's that but there's also lynchburg south carolina and that's where i'm from mm -hmm. so i love like you know saying where i'm from like my hometown um 
that that gave me a little <clears throat> um home is where i still go to get juiced up when i want to you know see mama that yes honey <laughs> um so ain't nothing wrong with being a little country girl from a small town um i love it i absolutely love it um as a matter of fact there's something very unique about the experiences of growing up in a small town for one when we went to school um your your teachers were also um your family members they were cousins they were church members like everybody knew everybody in everybody's business um our classmates drove our school buses to school yes we had 16 year olds driving school bus back then and guess what we didn't have all these wrecks and carrying on that y'all got now um but yeah my brother was a bus driver freddie durant was a bus driver um oh my gosh so many of us 16 and 17 year olds driving a 60 passenger school bus um with you on it um but another thing that that's just so amazingly wonderful about growing up in a small town like lynchburg is that um there is so much talent there so much talent um from lynchburg <laughs> Benita said, and they would cut that butt. Yes, when we came up, there was still corporal punishment in school. So I, I remember getting a, a, a whack on my behind from um, Mr. Leroy Gary. Yep, sure did. <laughs> um, Mr. Sinkler, I got a, a beating from him, and I got a beating from um, Miss Paula Barno. Yep. So. Um, just that, that strength and that love and that resilience of community was absolutely undeniable. So I appreciate that. And, and that's why I'm always so proud to say where I'm from, cause I ain't weak. Ain't no need to feel sorry about me for no situation or what, cause I came up under some of the baddest and strongest and lovingness folk out there um and they loved you with a real real love i'm gonna make my hot dog but i'm gonna ooh, turn that off yeah get my little wilted broccoli on there so the talent that comes out of Lee County, Lynchburg, South Carolina in particular, let me tell you, nothing short of amazing. Get my chili going. Oh, nice chunky pieces of beef. Oh, look at that garlic on there, honey. And this is why you want to split the hot, hot dog open like that so that you can fit more of the goodies inside that's just what i do i just like doing it that way i'm gonna get some uh some caramelized onions on here and i'm gonna share some of this this good old dinner with y'all <laughs> I hope this coleslaw is good. I prefer KFC, but I didn't. I ain't got no KFC near me, so I just went to Publix and got this. Mm, 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 mm. I know the plate is super huge, but that's that's my hot dog with my coleslaw on top, my chili in between, and um, my caramelized onions and all of that. I'm gonna just scoot up a little bit. To holla at y'all. Oh. 
Oh boy. Supper time, supper time. Supper, supper, supper time. Supper time. Ah, yes. So, back to the talent of the county. So, I am currently reading. I just started. I haven't finished them yet. Um, work has been crazy, but I'll probably get through these um, before next week. I can give you a full review. But I'm, I'm going to read a... Hang on one second, y'all. Hey, Beverly Laurie. Oh, my gosh. Hold on. I'm going to adjust the uh, camera just a little bit, okay? Bear with me. I know. I know. I know. I'm here. I'm, I'm just trying to get it right. Get it tight. That's all. Lord, one of these days I'm going to be able to hire a, a, um, a videographer or somebody. Hey. <laughs> um, back to my story. So, I just, y'all pardon me. Hold on, I'm going to say a little grace and then I'm going to commence the evening and I'm going I'm to tell you about what I'm reading now, okay? <sighs> Thank you, Lord, for this food. I pray that you continue to heal me, prosper me, and allow me to grow in relationships and friendships and sisterhoods and all that you would have for me in Jesus' name. I pray, amen, amen, amen. I must bite. Mm, 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 mm. 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 Oh my God, them car. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> the caramelized onions on this. With that good old chili underneath. The bread is nice and soft and warm. A little crispy underneath, but soft when you bite into it. Mmm. <laughs> that broccoli is just right. Now, if you want to give your broccoli a little more texture, then do it like I did. Boil it. Real quick, with your seasonings, not boil it, steam it. Some good old seasonings, whatever you like, the butter and olive oil, and steam it out until it turns bright green. Then take it off the fire, and then put it on top of the griddle, and that's what you get. Mmm, 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 mmm. Here's what I'm reading. Freedom is our choice. We decide if we want to continue to be in bondage or set free. There were many days and nights that I felt locked away and no key was available to release me. I was locked in my own mind, emotions, ungodly relationships, and even in my own personal abilities. My daughter is my mental keeper. She keeps me focused and on track about life simply because she watches every move I make and listens closely to everything I say. There are questions that I'm asked by her. There are questions that I'm asked by her that if, it, that if I did not have my mom, I would only be able to give her a blank stare. Even though I was a mom before my daughter, girls give a different meaning to the word mother. Yeah, I depended on God, but I needed a, an audible voice and a visible body to help me understand my role. 
There were live instructions and guidance that I needed as a woman. This comes from the book with my hands lifted up. I know it's backwards, but this is from our home girl, y'all, LaShawn Gray. LaShawn Le Stooks, LaShawn Gray. Mm -hmm. This book is filled with, um, she gives little anecdotes about even her marriage and what it is to be like as you just read, complete as a woman when, when raising um, a child. And is she's so transparent. And I love that. So this is in chapter 8. Uh, chapter 8 is called Being Free as a Woman. It's from the book With My Hands Lifted Up. And you can get it on Amazon. Um, I, as soon as I got paid, because I promised him, I was like, y'all, when I get my little check, I'm going to go on Amazon and I'm going to order your books. And I did. And I'm so glad that I did. And it's so good um, to see y'all doing the thing. This, this is awesome. LaShawn Gregg with my hands lifted up. This is the cover. So when you're looking on it, looking for it on Amazon, um, you'll be able to find it. The chapters include titles such as... Well, she does a dedication page, of course. Um, chapter 8 was about um, being free as a woman. Chapter 2 is all together. Chapter 5, so much more than that. Um, and then it tells you more and more um, just about where she was born, how she came up, her faith, her struggles with her faith. Got to get this one. Okay, I'll take another bite, and I got another one for you, okay? Y'all. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. I'm not going to keep you long tonight. Um, but I just wanted to. I told y'all. Consistency and follow through. And if I can't do nothing but come on here and say, hey y'all, how y'all doing? I just came to speak. And then dip out and go to bed and take me some Benadryl, then that's what I got to do. But I wanted to spend time with you. And I'm happy that you wanted to spend time with me. Mm, mm, mm. Now I'm going to read to you something else. Ready? Let me clear the orifice so I can get the words out. It's street food tonight, y'all. Hot dogs. When I tell you. This is the best hot dog I had in a long time. But tonight wasn't about the hot dog. I just wanted to make myself something simple to eat and you just happened to be watching. Thank you, my big sister Cheryl. Great job on studio on um, Sugar Pearl Studio Kitchen. I love you, sister. Let me tell y'all, when I found out I had a big sister, that Cheryl Brown Davis. Boo. God gave me the ultimate gift. Sure did. Gave us. Because our whole family is like, oh my God, where have you been on our lives? It's just been one wonderful journey after the next. So, anyway, um, because I'm, a, she going to be my special guest, uh, coming up real soon in October and we'll explain and go through all of that yeah y'all y'all gonna be <laughs> trust me we're blessing y'all we're blessing y'all here we go day one trust God when it doesn't make sense mm. 
because of course, like we know how things are supposed to work out. And, and then when God started doing his thing, we just like, that don't make no sense. It don't make no sense to you because you simple. I'm simple. And God, mm, this ain't no preaching show. It's just, listen. Genesis 22 and 2 says, Then God said, Take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him as a burnt offering on a mountain. I will show you. All right, I'm gonna stop right there, y'all. Cause um, we've read that passage of scripture for years and years and years. And you know, when we in church and we in the spirit, we like, yes, sacrifice him. Yes, God, do your thing, do your thing. Um, but let's think about that in the natural for a second. Somebody, anybody, man, woman, boy, girl, God, ask me to sacrifice my only son. Samuel is my only son. He's 22 years old. Bring him to the altar and slaughter him. Me and God, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have a problem. Because in that moment, I'm not, I ain't fully committed to that task. Sacrifice my only son? Now see, y'all Y'all think that, oh my God, how could she say that? You know, that's God. You shouldn't be questioning God. Life is, is full of questions. And coming to your own spiritually, coming into your own spiritually, means that you are constantly questioning because questioning actually strengthens your faith. It does. So I'm questioning God, why you got me, I'm going to use Samuel as an example, why you want me to bring Sam to the altar and slaughter him to prove your God? Well, the title of this day one chapter is called Trust in God When It Doesn't Make Sense. Now it goes on to say, No, God, not my child. Are you sure, God? That's, that's the response I'm giving. That's the natural response. My only son? And you say, Hunter, what? Mm -mm, I ain't with it. Are you sure? See, sometimes that's how it is. God gives us these tasks and these things that seem so insurmountable. And um, because he wants to see where your faith lies. Is it in him or is it only in what you can see? Well, for most of us that are not so, you know, strong spiritually or, or just struggling with that, aspect of our lives, that is a struggle. It's a real struggle. The author goes on to say, would have been all the questions swirling in my head. But in Abraham's obedience, God was trusting him to obey without question. And Abraham was trusting God to provide an alternative, which he did. When it doesn't feel good, trust God. When it doesn't sound good, because that didn't sound good. That didn't sound like nothing I want to do, God. But the author says, trust God. When it looks lonely and never ending, trust God. Trusting God will lead you to a blessing later that will all make sense in the end. That is day one of 30 days of overflow from my homegirl. I don't know if you can see her picture real good, but this is Rochella Dow McDowell. 
And this is her book, 30 Days of Overflow. Mm -hmm. So she gives you a message for 30 days each day that you can just throw yourself. But these are two of Lynchburg's own. I posted them earlier on my Facebook page with my hands lifted up by LaShawn Gregg and 30 Days of Overflow from Rochella McDowell. Um, Y'all go on Amazon and support our women. Support your sisters. Real women. So, S-O-W. Real women, S O W. Real women sew, they support other women. Because it's enough out here for all of us to get. And when you stop thinking about it as something that you're getting, but rather something that you are giving, it's a different feeling. Because now you're not in competition with anybody. Now you're trying to beat yourself. Remember how I tell you, uh, if you're going to be in competition with anybody, be in competition with yourself. Make yourself better than the day before. Well, when you are really focused on giving yourself in whatever your ministry is, mine just happens to be cooking. And tonight it's street food, hot dogs on a Friday night. Um, and I don't see it as something that I'm taking. I thank you for joining me and being here with me. But the time that I get to spend giving, it really is the best medicine for me. Because I wasn't feeling good. I did not. I was just like, oh gosh, I just, I just need to get well. But um, there was something more that I needed to give. And I needed to be consistent and have follow through. So that's what I did tonight. And I hope, look at it. We only been together for about an hour and three minutes. And I'm about to let you go. But I thank y'all every time you come on um, and, and show me a little bit of love and affection on Sugar Pearl Studio Kitchen Live, it makes my night. It really does. So I'm going to invite you once again to make sure you check out my youtube page go there subscribe comment like all of that stuff uh the youtube page is simply titled sugar pearls and that's s-u-g-a-r-p-e-a-r-l apostrophe s I, I wrote it down somewhere but that's it and um instagram is sugar pearls underscore online.com um of course you can check me out here every friday night live um don't worry i'm gonna have a special guest coming real soon really soon and we'll get to enjoy dinner and dialogue and hopefully you will be turning in thomas thank you i love you too and i i appreciate you for all you have done and all that you are this is Carla signing off of Sugar Pearl Studio Kitchen Live. Thanks again, and I hope to see you next week.